What's up everyone? It's Tyranitar Tube and welcome to this huge Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire trailer breakdown. Now last week, Pokemon Get TV promised us new gameplay on their next episode, which is two days from now. But it seems like this gameplay has been revealed early by the official Pokemon company in Japan. So let's go ahead and break this massive trailer down. The trailer starts off showcasing a few of the new Mega Evolutions to feature in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, followed by a small clip of Steven studying inscriptions on Primal Groudon on the Granite Cave walls. They then show us gameplay of the player walking through Route 120 east of Fortree City, and a few things can be noted here. For one, we finally get a look at the tall grass, and just like in the original games, it's just as tall as you to not only allow other trainers to hide in it, I mean except for AZ, but to also restrict you from using your bike in it. It looked odd in 2D, but in 3D at a lower angle it looks much better. We can also finally get a look at how the super secret based openings and bushes will look like so now we finally know how all three known openings will look like. I just hope that they'll add another one like an underwater opening. They then give us a quick peek at Pacific Log Town and oh my lord it looks beautiful. I mean there's not much to see here other than how the town looks like with the houses and the logs but it just looks so calm and peaceful and the new graphics just stand out. But considering Mirage Island is detected by visiting the man in this city is a definite tease making me wish I could just go in and see more because I'm really looking forward to what Mirage Island could offer I mean it's such a special place and all you could do there originally was get berries and catch why not but now three generations ahead there's so much more that they can add and I just hope Mirage Island holds something big in these remakes following that we finally have gameplay of the player diving underwater and it looks amazing in 3d the lower angled view makes the underwater world more like a maze and from the looks of it the underwater world will become expanded and will probably contain more puzzles to help you find more items like the new mega stones. In the back, you can see Pokemon swimming along, as well as two patches of what looks like seaweed that you would be able to find Pokemon in. And that actually brings up the thought of whether underwater Pokemon will be encountered through the seaweed like it has always been, or just generally when you're underwater as if you're in a cave. You can also see the player wearing scuba diving equipment to disprove all those close fakes recently. They then show us gameplay of the desert in Route 111, but the only notable thing here is the leveling like in black and white, and in battles where the desert background looks amazing. They also reveal multiple other in battle pieces of footage showcasing even more backgrounds like on cycling road which gets me thinking about how much further they'll be taking these backgrounds from not just including more in the game but also allowing you to choose backgrounds in wi-fi battles we then get gameplay of route 116 early on in the game where you can go through this cut maze to get various items and comparing it to the original cut maze you'll notice that the entire layout has been changed along with that the trainers pokemon here seem a tad bit stronger than it was in the original games but contrary to that brawly's pokemon seem weaker than in the original games, which is probably Game Freak making the main game overall easier to beat like they did in X and Y. We also have extended gameplay of how the versus animation looks like when you're fighting the gym leaders, and right here the player's Groval can be seen using Leaf Blade against Brawly's Makuhita, and considering Groval could never learn Leaf Blade before level 29 supports the theory that Pokemon will learn new moves in Omega Ruby and Delta Sapphire, from learning moves earlier on to learning moves that they couldn't before, like Shiftry now having access to Leaf Blade. Following that, we see the player on Mount Pi which actually retains most of its original layout, but that 3D pan over is just beautiful. Take in how amazing this looks and then imagine Sky Pillar. Just imagine entering into Sky Pillar and the camera just tilting up to the top. But this area actually seems like a fitting place for a mega stone like the Sableye. But anyways, we then get a look at Moss Deep City Space Center. And I actually have a really good feeling that there's gonna be a lot more to the Space Center than we think in these games. Or maybe it's just a part of me that's remembering all those rumors about going to the moon and fighting the Oxus. Following that, they show us gameplay of Zootopolis City with the player surfing in front of the gym with that beautiful reflection of the mountain formation around the city as well as inside the gym with the player trying to make their way to the leader. And actually very similar to the fake leaks I covered a few days ago, it appears the surfing model is actually a Wilmer. Either that or Wilmer has its own unique surfing model. Now originally, closely analyzing the official Auras map, you'll notice that there's actually bridges in Zootopolis City that connect the gym to the left and right sides of the city. But because it isn't the same in the actual game, that means not everything shown on this map is how it's gonna be like in the game. The Zootopolis City Gym seems to retain the same puzzle of trying to step on every tile but only once, but it looks like it's much more difficult now. Not only are there extra platforms that you'll need to step on in order to successfully solve the puzzle, but along with the horde of trainers on the bottom level, there's also trainers on the top 
top floor now. But notice how they're still hiding the gym leaders from us? This really does have me thinking that Juan could be the gym leader with Wallace being elsewhere or maybe even the super boss in the game. I mean, why else would they not show us the last three gym leaders and the last two members of the Elite Four? My idea still stands as Steven being the initial champion but Wallace taking over during the rematches. That would be the perfect way to add in that part of Emerald into the remakes. Following that, we have gameplay of the player using the Acrobike to hop up logs in the Safari Zone which seems to have a different layout along with an expansion. We also get a glimpse of the player tiptoeing towards a Pikachu which reminds me of Link crawling in the Wind Waker games, but it gives off a few ideas. Some people think that this small addition is exclusive to Pikachu and that this is how you get the cosplay Pikachu that can change outfits, and others think that it's part of a new chain or shiny hunting mechanic. To start actually, the Pikachu we see here is not actually the cosplay Pikachu as it doesn't have the black tipped tail, and it was already confirmed to be received as a gift Pokemon after participating in a few contests. And while this could be a new chaining mechanic, I think that it's just an addition where the rarest of Pokemon in an area will sometimes appear in the overworld and are interactable if you're careful. And tiptoeing could also possibly fill the role of the C-Stick on the 3DS, which was originally used in X and Y for roller skating. And maybe if you gently budge the C-Stick, it'll allow you to tiptoe around. But one thing to note is that this is very similar to the exclusive Miu event where you'd play hide and seek with the Miu in Faraway Island. Maybe Game Freak is hinting at exclusive events returning as normal events in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. We then get gameplay of the player riding along the bridge by the waterfall on Route 119 and the Team Aqua admin sending off the submarine which now has a design based off Archie's signature Pokemon, Sharpedo. We then get gameplay of the player running across the bridge which is likely the bridge you passed before fighting Sydney of the Elite Four just because of how closely it resembles the background when fighting Sydney and how it just fit in perfectly. And finally, we get gameplay of the player riding their bike in the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire intro with the Latios flying off. They also talk about Japanese pre-order bonuses of two new Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon figures. I just hope we'll get similar bonuses in North America as well. And now that we're done with all that stuff, let's get to the epic parts of the trailer. Like we've seen before, the player can be seen walking up to the final room to battle Archie or Maxi, followed by gameplay of the two leaders in various parts of the game. Here, Maxi can be seen entering with his mega glasses or mega specs into what seems to be the Moss Deep Space Center, possibly prior to the Pokemon Emerald exclusive double battle with him, which is still possible as remakes tend to carry things from the original follow-ups as well. But then again, it could just be your first encounter with them in Slayport City. We then get the scene between Team Magma and Team Aqua at Meteor Falls and just look around, it looks amazing! But look at what he says! What are you waiting for, Game Freak? Just reveal Mega Sharpedo and Mega Camera Up. We know they're coming. But anyways, both May and Brendan can be seen here, which likely means that your rival will play a larger role in the story. I mean, they kind of have to in these remakes. The final time you battled them in the original games, their starter wasn't even fully evolved. I'm sure Game Freak will at least give us a true final battle in the remakes, or maybe even a Mega Evolution battle like they did with Serena and X and Y. But here is where the hype train takes off again. Gameplay of the version exclusive cutscene that plays in the Cave of Origin can be seen. The markings on their bodies begin to glow yellow and they just awaken and summon the Drizzler Drought. They can then be seen transforming into their primal forms like two devastating monsters, meaning that you will battle these legends in their primal forms. To me, it was really disappointing in Pokemon X and Y when you fought Mewtwo who had possession of its Megastone but didn't use it to Mega Evolve in battle. But this, this is gonna be epic. And just just look at them, they are huge, they have that majestic glow emanating and actually look intimidating. I mean, imagine being in the shoes of the player right there. I just cannot wait to battle these two in game. But anyways, if you guys haven't done so yet, be sure to check out the Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon shirts. They're available for a limited time, so be sure to pick one up before the campaign ends. You can click on the shirts or click the links in the description to go to its page. But anyways guys, that's it for this trailer breakdown analysis. Make sure you drop a like if you're hyped about Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. and let me know your thoughts on the various things shown in this trailer. There's a lot more Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire content to come, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. If you want to see a video on a possible Primal Reggie Gigas in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, go ahead and check out the video on the left. You can also hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified each time I upload a video.